Today on the channel, it's the return of the Kyle Peterson Top 5, and today we've got something a little different. My Top 5 Least Favorite Wrestling Toy Lines of All Time. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Kyle Peterson Top 5. A Thursday tradition is every Thursday we count down a top five of something action figure related, usually. Uh, my five, you know, action figure lines of all time, my top five of a certain character. You never know where the list might go, myself included. So that's why you need to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, every single Thursday, we got a new top five list. And I'm a positive guy. I'm a pretty positive, looking on the bright side of stuff most of the time, I would say. I think that's a fair enough assessment. But today, there's going to be none of that. I've been around wrestling figures about my whole life. From almost, I guess you could say, the start of wrestling figures. I mean, pretty pretty much, for the most part. Uh, the start of wrestling figures to today. So I've seen lines come. I've seen lines go. I've seen lines I loved. I've seen lines I hated. And we're going to wrap it up a little bit today. And I'm going to count down my five least favorite wrestling figure lines of all time. Now, this is, of course, subjective. Like every one on my list, I always ask you guys, put your list in the comments down below because a lot of it, I think, depends what age are you? Where were you collecting? When was your height of fandom? I think a lot of that goes into uh, what you end up liking, obviously. And that could go for wrestling figures or anything in this world. Music, you name it. There's a lot of people, you know, oh, I grew up in the 70s, I only listen to 70s music. Hey, to each their own is what I say, and to each their own with your five favorite or five least favorite toy wrestling lines of all time. And for me, I got to say, these just never captured my heart. Every single one of these I never liked from the beginning. I've owned a few of these figures throughout the years, as anybody does. You know, you jump in, you buy some. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to like these. And then you just say... Hot garbage. Now, somebody, I can tell you, Hasbro's, LJN's, Classic Superstars, Mattel, they're not going to be on this list. I have a deep fondness for those. And once again, maybe it's because of my age. Maybe it's because of where I grew up and what I like, whatever. Those aren't going to be in these. These are some more ancillary lines, a few heavy hitter lines. And I know some of you guys are going to say, how dare you say these are one of your least favorites? That's what the beauty is. It's my list. You guys put your list down below. But uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I think somebody will be mad out there. There might be some triggered folks. But hey, it is what it is. And I can talk about like LJN. A lot of you could probably hate LJNs. They're not on my list. They would be in my top five favorites, probably. Uh, I love LJNs, but I grew up as a small kid playing with LJNs. You might have that same with one of these lines, and I totally get that. And, uh, you know, some people say LJNs are dog toys. I get it. I get it. But to little Kyle, and to little Kyle after all these years, still absolutely love them. So you're not going to see something like that on my list, but there's going to be some usual suspects that you guys know I probably hate on the list. So here it is. Let's get down to it. Let's kick it off with number five. All right, let's kick it off at number five. And this is the one on the list I think most people might be angry at me for different reasons. But it is what it is. I got to call a spade. You can't love everything. And like I said earlier, for whatever reason, this just never hit me where I wanted to be hit in my wrestling figure fandom. So number five for me, this is a line that came in about 1985, 1986, and that is the Remco line. Yes, Remcos. I know a lot of you guys absolutely love the Remcos. Here's, here's my breakdown of the Remcos. I just missed them. I was, uh, you know, five years old when they came out, four years old, four or five years old. I was a little bit young, a little bit young to have deep understanding. I had the Joes. I knew those. Uh, but my first wrestling figure ever, some of you guys may not know, maybe you do know, Outback Jack LJN. So that was a couple years later. So I wasn't into wrestling figures. Now, I remember seeing these out there. I remember not being real impressed with these. Uh, even at an early age, once I started collecting LJNs, you could still see Remcos. You still had buddies that had Remcos and stuff. Now, very strange because my first action figures I ever remember getting and collecting was Masters of the Universe He-Man figures, of course. So these are very similar to He-Man in like uh, their playability, their sculpt, stuff like that. So a lot of people say you loved He-Man, but you don't like Remco's. Why? 
I don't know. I don't know. I wanted that body style was good for my He-Man playing, but not good for my wrestling playing. That's just the way I sat there, and that's the way I see it. Uh, and Remco's were still around into the LJN days. I mean, back in the days, things weren't clearanced out like they are now. There's not new waves coming and pushing them out. Sometimes figures be re-released for a year plus sometimes. Uh, and we saw Remco's around, but they just never did it to me. Obviously, being a small boy, I was living in AWA territory, but didn't understand the AWA at that age. I understood the WWF that was, you know, thrown down every kid's, uh, you know, skull and teeth every single day, every Saturday morning. You saw those. They came out. They were bigger, larger than life. I didn't know these characters. I didn't know who these AWA guys were for the most part. There was a few out there. Uh, but LJNs, that is where my jumping off in wrestling fandom collecting really went. Remco is just a moment in time I missed by a few years. I bet you if I was a couple years older, I would probably would have all been into the Remco's. But it's just, that's where that time frame jump goes. Some of you guys might have that with LJN. You just weren't of that time. You can't understand the love somebody like me would have for those. And I totally get it. But that's how I am with the Remco's. Just missed it by a little bit. I owned a few. I owned Ric Flair. Maybe it was Larry Zabisco. I remember my grandma getting him at a garage sale or something like that when I was a kid. I remember saying, gosh, this is Ric Flair, okay. And it just didn't feel like a wrestling figure to me when I already had LJNs. It's just weird. It's a child's brain. That's how it goes. But I've never had the sentimental attachment to the Remcos. I've never went back and said, man, I need a Remco collection. I need to pick those up. I don't own any Remcos in my collection currently. You know, but all that being said, I am a collector. If a hot screaming deal on a Remco collection came, I may look at it. I don't know. I don't know if I was gifted it or something like that, or I was giving it to in a will, maybe. But it's not something I'm actively looking for. Uh, but I do respect the Remcos. I do respect that was a lot of people's jumping point into wrestling figures. So I get it. I understand it. It's just not for me. And that's why Remco's are number five on my top five least favorite wrestling lines of all time. All right, we're at the number four spot. And it's just, it's interesting looking at this list and the years these figures came out. And it's just really is, it comes down to where you were in your life when these things were being released. I mean, that's really how it comes down to it. I'm sure a lot of your guys' lists uh, could be in that same, same mode, I think. So I don't know. That's just looking at it right now in between. That's how I come to this. And number four is an interesting one. And it truly is hot garbage. All these years later, I still think of it as hot garbage. What am I talking about? The WCW original San Francisco toy makers. Now, not the LJN type versions of those. That is not what I'm talking about. We're talking about the six, six and a half inch scale, 1998, uh, hard kind of plastic. Really what I akin these to when they came out, I was in high school. I did not purchase these. I've had a few, like I said, over the years. Um, I don't have any currently. I got rid of them. But whenever I see these, I always think of like play school. I think like three-year-old wrestling toys. That's what these remind me of. They remind me of some really cheap, uh, unbreakable kind of thing you'd give to a very, very small toddler. Not something an adult collector or even a 8, 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old collector. Or maybe 10, 11, 12-year-old collector or player out there would want. I just never understood these. I remember seeing these at KB Toy Stores especially, just rotting on the shelves in my area all the time. I mean, they had some heavy hitter characters in there. They had all the WCW guys from the 98, 97 period in there. Uh, a big boom in wrestling, as we all know. But these were just not figures for me. They never were. They never will be. I just don't understand. But once again, this is Kyle, his age bracket, you know, deep into high school at this time. I wasn't buying a ton of toys. I was dabbling, of course. I didn't have a ton of money. I was working. I was going to school. I, you know how it goes. We've all been there. And you might have been there during the class superstars era. You might have been there during some other area. So I get it. But maybe if you're a little kid, you're eight, nine years old, six years old, five years old, whatever. Maybe you like these back in the day, but I remember seeing these and just being like, "Ugh, what are they doing, man? What happened to the old wrestling figures like LJN and Hasbro? I remember thinking that at KB back in the day. So this line, just not for me then, not for me now. I just don't get it. And that's all I can say about that. And that's why it comes in at number four for me. 
All right, we're at the halfway point in our top five least favorite wrestling figure lines of all time countdown, and we've come to number three. Now, where am I going here? We're going to 1999-2000, the very end of Kyle's high school time, basically. So, you know, junior, senior in high school, not buying a ton of wrestling figures. I'm dabbling with some favorites of old and stuff like that, but this is about the time of the Great Purge, and this is about the time, and we'll go into that Great Purge I had back in 1999-2000, uh, someday on the channel. We'll do a, it's so hard to say goodbye talking about that one, but 99-2000, you probably know I'm going. I'm going to the WWE Titantron figures. Yes, Titantron. I know some people like those as well, but this was where I really said, all right, wrestling figures have jumped the shark for me. These are horrible. I just do not like the looks of these at all. They all had that weird kind of leg out position. Uh, they had the weird arms. You know, the arms went up, but they were all off to the side. They looked too uniform. They had a gimmick to them where you could put them on that Titantron stage and it would do a saying and stuff. I've never been about that. I've always wanted to use my own imagination in those kind of things. But once again, I, I was in high school. I wasn't playing with my toys. I wasn't playing with these. But just by the looks of them, absolutely nothing for me. They did nothing for me. Uh, I've owned a ton of Titan Trons over my life because, you know, when they first came out, hey, I'm going to buy some of these. I'm going to check them out. Man, these are hot garbage. I don't like these. I'm done. I've bought a lot of lots, action figure lots. I've had stuff gifted to me by family and friends over the years. So I've come across my fair share of Titan Trons. I've seen a lot of them over the years. They just never hit me in the nostalgia feels. I just thought they were hot garbage from the get-go. It's funny, you know, I never... I don't know. Uh, sometimes you think right off the bat you don't like something, and then sometimes you don't like it, and then years later you come to appreciate it a little bit more. Uh, WCW, OSFTM, LJN Inspired. I thought they were hot garbage when they came out. Many, many years later, uh, they had a special charm to them, and I love them now. Uh, so maybe 20 years from now, you know, Titan Trons will say, you know what, those weren't so bad, but I doubt it. They just were not for me. They just, I really felt like this was my jumping out of totally being done with wrestling figures was with the Titan Tron. So it really did uh, kind of kill Kyle inside a little bit. But I know, once again, this is a very popular line. It ran really strong for a few years with a ton of releases. So if you were of the Attitude Era, you were a kid playing and stuff, I understand there's a lot of kids that have those nostalgia feels for the Titan Trons. But somebody of my age, my demographics, my collecting at the time, my thoughts looking all back uh, many years now not for me just not what i wanted out of wrestling figures and uh, one of my least favorite that's why it's number three of all time so there's number three now we got to take a look at number two all right we're down to the final two any guesses can you guess my least favorite my two least favorite wrestling figure lines of all time some of you maybe some of you maybe not but number two was one that really hit me in the gut pretty hard at the time. I was very disappointed here. This was the utmost of disappointment. And really, looking back at this list where this stuff was released, really the 90s were a disappointing time in wrestling figures. Uh, looking back, for me at least. For me, a disappointing time for wrestling figures. And it's funny because that was one of the biggest boom periods of wrestling was, of course, the Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars, stuff like that. But... One that really broke my heart, really, really did break my heart. Truly one of the biggest heartbreaking moments of my collecting life, playing life, toy life, stuff like that was, well, we'll just kick into it. We'll kick into it. So number two, my number two least favorite is the WWF Bendies. The Bendies. Yes, the Bendies. You know, the rubber just toy Bendies. A lot of people have had them, myself included. If you guys see, I think I did a That's So Hard to Say Goodbye on my Bendies collection. Just over time, you just amass these things and you say, why? And that's what I did with these Bendies. Now, going back in the day with these Bendies, we had Hasbros before Bendies. The Hasbros, universally loved by most people out there, I would say the Hasbros are, myself included. Those were some of my prime playing years. I love the Hasbros. I was heartbroken when the Hasbros went away. And then, you know, back then you're a kid. You don't know, is there more coming? Uh, maybe there's a delay. Uh, when are they going to restock with new figures? You just don't know those things. There wasn't the internet back then. But then all of a sudden these bendies come through. And I said, what is this? What is this? I had no idea. And I thought, well, they got bendies. And now we're going to have Hasbros. Well, Hasbros never came back. It was done. It was over. I mean, the green cards, I didn't even know those. Didn't even sniff those existed. 
But the bendies were everywhere. They were everywhere in my area. And I just said, this isn't what I want out of my wrestling figures. This is not what I want. I don't want these bendy, cartoony style figures. And once again, I know people are very nostalgic for these. There's a lot of people that love the Bendies. Uh, the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast has a Bendies line coming out at the end of this year, early 2022. There's a whole market for them. I understand that, but man, it's not a market for me. Uh, I just didn't like the poses they were in. They all looked the same. They were supposed to be bendy, but they didn't really bend a ton. It was just an extremely disappointing time going from the beloved Hasbros and before that beloved LJNs for me. And then all of a sudden these bendies, it just the size I didn't like. I didn't like the feel. I didn't like what they were. They almost felt like a gas station toy. Like you go to a gas station, they always have weird toys and stuff. That's what I always think of when I think of the bendies. I think of, oh, that's a cheap toy, mass-produced, thrown in a gas station, uh, almost bootleg-esque level out there. But, man, I tell you what, as you guys know, or maybe you don't, the bendies lasted a heck of a long time. You know, toys, toy lines don't last a long time. Mattel Basics, Mattel Elites, for example, those have lasted more than, like, 10 lifetimes in the average toy cycle. I mean, you go back to a lot of toy lines, they were one or two years tops, and that was it. They were done. But some wrestling figure lines, like the Mattel ones, even classic superstars, Ruthless Aggression, lasted a heck of a long time. But you look at the Bendies, for what they were, and I think a lot of people think they were around only a year or two. I mean, they were around like seven, almost eight years, I think, something like that. The Bendies had a long life, but then they were so inconsistent. Uh, the packaging changes, which is understood through toys, but then even sizes. You get different sizes. The first one started off bigger. They shrunk down smaller. The scale was all over the place. Man, they were just hot garbage. That's that's what I'm going to have to say. They're just hot garbage for me. It's just very disappointing. And, and part of my hate, if we want to call that for the Bendies, really goes with the Hasbro's ending and going to that. And that was what took over. Really broke my heart. It really did. And it just was a part of the... 90 drab of wrestling figures that really I'm so thankful classic superstars ended up coming uh, down the line into my college days really reignited my love for wrestling figures because man if those didn't come along I don't know where I would be as far as collecting uh, because they were dark times these were some of the darkest times these five lines uh, for me in my collecting of wrestling figures so there it is number two the Bendies. I know some of you guys love it. I get it. Put your list down below of your least five least favorite. And you got to put them in order. I always say that. That's the hard part. It's easy just to rattle five off, but you got to put them in order like I always say. So now we've come to it. What is my least favorite wrestling toy line of all time? Well, it's up next. All right, we've come to the number one spot. Like I said earlier, make sure you get your list in the comments. Put them in order. But number one for me was Back in the dark times. So now we go back. We talked about Titan Trons already. You know, Titan Trons, they weren't for me. I didn't like them. Well, news came. Titan Trons were going away. They were finally moving on. Even though Titan Trons really didn't go away. They kind of kept them as like Walgreens exclusives without the gimmicks and stuff with the bodies as cheaper figures. So they hung around a while. But for all intents and purposes, they were pretty much done. And WWE and Jax were moving on to the next great adventure in wrestling figures. And what was that going to be? It was 2002. It was 2003. I was in college. I remember them coming out. And I remember just having an audible gasp of disappointment when I saw these for the first time at Walmart. What am I talking about? The R3 Jax figures. My least favorite toy line of wrestling figures of all time absolutely hated these i remember the day i saw him i think i saw booker t and maybe uh man maybe hogan nash i can't remember who it was i saw i think booker t but i was at walmart and i saw this for the first time in hand i said oh i just remember just having an audible sigh of uh it's like i was hoping for something more i was hoping for something i don't know if i was hoping back for ljns i was hoping for hasbro's i was hoping for for something but this r3 was not it and i remember at the time a lot of people thinking this is the future of toys the real scan they look so great and the heads yeah you knew who they were where i could see you know people saying oh some of these lgns and maybe even hasbro's maybe you don't know who they are something you definitely knew who the r3 figures were but they all had that same weird kind of pose to them that weird look to them you know the hogan especially the skinny arms he always looked like old man nursing home hulk hogan to me 
All the figures just had a, a weird pose and a weird look to them. And they all looked different, but at the same time looked extremely the same. I felt like there wasn't variance in size of body sizes and stuff. Everybody was about the same height. It just, and I get it. I understood heights. I understood all that stuff, but just... It felt just like blah in a package. I don't know if a lot of people really have a fondness for the R3s all these years later. There's some people that went back and said they liked them. And if you were in the heat of buying toys as a little kid, I can see you having uh, some love for these. But I think the average Joe, especially people my age, uh, we don't like these R3s. These aren't for us. Uh, they just are terrible. They're just terrible looking figures. Skin tones being a little strange sometimes. You know, one of the one R3 packs I always go to, and I've had it in my collection a few times over the years, that Hulk Still Rules 3 pack of R3 figures, just hottest of hot garbage. And I remember finally I sold it maybe a couple months ago or six months ago. What's time anymore? I sold it and I said, why do I have this? I hate R3 figures. It's cool. It's a Hulkamania pack, but this does not belong in my collection. So I did sell that. And that's just the way it goes. But R3s, that's one toy line I don't foresee me ever wanting to pick up. It was such a punch in the gut. But luckily, just a short time later, we were blessed with the classic superstars. We did get Ruthless Aggression. And I'm sure some of you guys will have Ruthless Aggression, classic superstars, era type figures in your top five least favorite. Uh, maybe you're a younger, you were a real young kid and you said, these classic guys, I don't know any of these people. I don't like this. This is a line not for me. I understand it. I get it. But I was so happy with that because something about Jack's Ruthless Aggression, just compared to Titan Trons and R3s, I just loved how they looked. They just looked so much better. And that's uh, really, if that line didn't come, I don't know if I would have ever even dabbled. It would have been so long in between me collecting wrestling figures. I don't know if I could have got back into it. I mean, I, I passed on a lot of that WCW stuff, the Marvels, the Bendies, uh, of course, the Titan Trons, the OSFTM, some of that stuff. And then the R3s, it's like, gosh dog 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 why do i even look anymore i mean it was pretty much to that point but like i said luckily the ruthless aggression came along for me reignited my spirit reignited a lot of my love for action figures uh and wrestling figures in general so very interesting like i said at the beginning i think a lot of it has to do with your age where you were as a player a collector whatever and i think if maybe i was a, a little kid during the 90s to the early 2000s, maybe I would have a different approach out there. That's the only thing I can think of. But from where I sit, which as you guys know is right here at this table, and as of right now in 2021, these are my top five least favorite wrestling figure lines of all time. But now the challenge has turned to you. Where do you sit? What are your top five least favorite? Uh, put them in order, one through one being your all time least favorite. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys say. Uh, it'll be interesting where stuff comes because I know some of my favorite lines of all time will be in your list. So it'll be interesting to see everybody's lists out there. So make sure you put it down below. And you made it this far. So you might as well give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel. Like I said, every Thursday, we got a brand new... Uh top five video out there and it could be anything across the gamut a lot of you guys put some suggestions out there and i'll definitely be doing those uh one day as well somebody threw a top five announcers in the other day that was a great one i said you know i should look at that top five announcer figures of all time uh so a lot of good ideas we got a lot of these videos to do i mean we could almost do them uh forever basically but let me know your thoughts in the comments make sure you like comment and subscribe all that fun stuff follow me on social media uh, sir paul 64 on twitter instagram the underscore kyle underscore peterson of course pressing tees search kyle peterson support the channel buy a t-shirt so there it is my top five least favorite wrestling figure lines of all time